What's up YouTube? Welcome back. My name is Tony and today we're talking about recording electric guitars. So before we start looking at amps and microphones and all that fun stuff, let's look at the absolute most basic way to record an electric guitar in a home studio. There's plenty of great amp simulation plugins out there. So if your home studio is in a small bedroom, an apartment, somewhere you can't make a whole lot of noise, or you just don't have an amp, look into some of these amp emulation plugins. The one I've been using recently is JST's Misha Mansour Tone Forge plugin. It's a massive plugin, incredibly versatile, a ton of different settings on there, and I haven't been able to find one that sounds bad yet. So the most basic way to record electric guitar, take your instrument, plug it directly into your interface. Fire up an instance of whatever amp emulation software you have, make sure it's record armed and... For continuity's sake, I've recorded a DI into my system already. Now I've got that running out through my system into a reamp box, from the reamp box into my pedal board, and from my pedal board into my Orange Rocker 30, which is going into my homemade cab here with two Eminence Red Wizard speakers in it. So of course the first thing to think about when recording electric guitars is your tone. Before you start putting up any microphones, make sure you're getting a sound that you're happy with in the room. You can change the sound a lot by putting a mic in various different positions in front of the cabinet, but if you're not starting with a good source, you're not going to end with a good result. So for our microphone selection today, we're going to start with the very basic Shure SM57. These things are an industry standard, because not only do they sound great on a wide variety of sources, but they're incredibly robust. They can take a beating if they need to. The usual suspects you see making up guitar cabs are uh, either a dynamic mic like the Shure SM57 or possibly the uh, Sennheiser 421 or E909, 609? 909. Either of those, I think, really. Uh, but you'll also see ribbon mics on occasion. Ribbon mics are great to complement these dynamic mics because they're a much darker sound than the bright dynamic mics. Things like a Royer 121 or an AEA, but those mics can be incredibly expensive. So if you're on more of a budget, some of the less expensive ribbon mics, such as this ART-M5 or this Apex 205, will do just fine. So let's talk about mic placement. So this cabinet has two 12-inch speakers in it, and they're slightly staggered. The one on the right is slightly higher than the one on the left. A little trick I've learned over the years is that if you want to see where the speakers are inside your cabinet, but there's a grill cloth over top of it, get out your phone, turn on the flashlight, and hold that right up to the right up to the grill cloth. You'll be able to see exactly where each of your speakers are. So we're going to start with the most basic. We've got our 57 on the left hand speaker. It is pointed right at the point where the dust cap of the speaker meets the cone of the speaker. Um, we're just about touching the grill cloth right up close and we're on axis, meaning we're pointing straight at it, not at an angle. So mic placement is very important because you can move your microphone one inch in any direction and it'll make a massive difference on the sound. So listen to how this exact same track sounds as I move the microphone back and forth across the speaker. So you can see how the sound changed pretty drastically as you went from the center of the speaker over to the edge of the cone. But the same is also true for the angle at which your microphone is placed in relation to the cabinet. If you put it at more of a 45 degree angle, you're going to get a much different tone than if it was straight on. So listen again as I take this microphone and move it back and forth and change the axis at which it's pointed to the speaker. So 
So I hope from that you can tell what a drastic difference every inch makes when it comes to your speaker placement. Now what about a different type of microphone? So for this example, we're going to not record the Shure SM57 and only record my Apex 205 ribbon mic. So you can see that's a much different sound than the SM57 was. It's generally darker, uh, rounder, and it'll uh, pick up more of your room ambience because the ribbon mics will pick up out of both the front and back sides of the microphone. So the combination of these two is generally how I like to record guitars. You got the bright mic and the dark mic and you can blend them together to taste. Something to keep in mind when you're recording multiple microphones is your phase relationship. Phasing while recording occurs when two microphones are picking up the same sound source, but are slightly different distances apart from the sound source, and therefore the sound hits one microphone before it hits the other microphone. This causes the waveforms from the two signals to conflict with each other and even cancel each other out at times. So over the years working in the studio, I started to realize that with the amp sitting so close to the floor, you're getting a lot of early reflections from hard wooden surfaces such as my floor here. So what I started to do is take a small piece of foam, um, if we had any extra of this stuff that I have on my walls laying around, or even just a blanket or a small pillow, it definitely helps to change that sound. So you can hear in that example that drastically cuts down the level of high early reflections coming into your microphone. Although I think in this instance, I have preferred the sound of the recording without the pillow underneath the mics. Well, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If uh, you liked what you saw and you'd like to see more content like this, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get informed when I release new videos. And stay tuned, there's gonna be more coming in the next little bit. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.